As some of you might know, years ago I was what they call a right libertarian, which basically means someone who believes in freedom but isn't really ready to abandon capitalism. Every day I would argue taxation was theft. I've done a lot of reading and listening and observing and thinking since then, and I've moved about a hundred miles to the left. And I find many on the left, including anarchists, are not happy to say taxation is theft. Some of them prefer uh, other ways of looking at it, and some of them just don't want to repeat a common right-wing slogan. I understand. But for me, this is definitely an area of agreement I hold with right libertarians. This past week, we finally got a look at Donald Trump's tax returns, and shockingly, amazingly, it turned out a rich guy doesn't pay his taxes. <laughs> Who'd have thunk it? That is perhaps the man's only redeeming feature. If you say it makes him a liar and a hypocrite, okay, but if you didn't already know he was, you must not know very much about him. If you say the rich should be paying taxes, well, they aren't. And everyone knows they aren't, as we know from things like offshore bank accounts and, of course, the Panama Papers. We just don't do anything about it. And the state will never really tax the super rich because it works for them. Or maybe it'll make a big show of taxing the rich, but quietly give it all back to them in contracts and subsidies. There's no reason to think taxing anyone would translate into more hospitals and nicer roads. Those are not the state's priorities. No one should be paying taxes while the state is conducting wars, police, surveillance, prisons. We're financing our own oppression. The fact that the state spends the bare minimum of its budget on hospitals and roads and whatever, and reduces that amount every time it can for whatever excuse, is not an argument for more taxes, but for those things to be done by the rest of us. We say defund the police, but then we say, but continue to take as much from us as you want and put it towards whatever budget priorities lobby groups say you should spend it on. If the state is still taxing and spending as much as it likes, nothing will be defunded for very long until the, straight, the state is drained of its last penny in revenue, it will always be a tool of repression and violence in service of the ruling class. I think with all that in consideration, taxation is wrong. I care less that it's theft than that it's used to kill and imprison and control. If you stole money off me to give your kids an education, I'll probably be mad at first, but understanding over time. Taking my money to kill a million Iraqis, however, is unforgivable. But I could still make the argument that it's theft, and for the purpose of this video, it's important that I do so. The state is entirely non-consensual. It never asks permission. It has never asked permission. And if you think it started as some kind of voluntary agreement of the people, you need this channel, and at least the videos that I link to in the description. The state finances itself by taking your money without asking. No one ever asked if you wanted to spend your money the way the state is spending your money. Your vote or your letters to your so-called representatives do nothing to change that. They took it without consent, they used it without consent, and if you try to fight back, you'll end up dead or in jail. Sounds like theft to me. Or else, maybe a racket. You could say taxation is a racket, although that's a bit less catchy. However, the argument should not end there. Is the state the only people taking from you? 
To answer that question, we need to know more about how libertarians understand the state. There are two common varieties of libertarian. The so-called anarcho-capitalist, like I used to be, the anti-state libertarian understanding of government is that it's basically illegitimate. That's where the taxation is theft meme comes from. Theft is wrong, therefore anything financed by theft is wrong. The people who today call themselves libertarians or classical liberals are similarly suspicious of government, except for a few supposedly essential state functions, like making and enforcing laws. And borders. I wonder why so many of them are into borders. And it's strange to hear them say that taxation is theft when they're also admitting theft is good for the right purposes. Or to hear them, the same people writing hashtag big gov sucks, but also supporting Donald Trump and everything he does. But then most of the same people also equate socialism with anything the government does, even in a capitalist system. So they're not the authorities on philosophy and economics that they claim to be. I give more detailed explanations of the state and quote-unquote small government in other videos. And again, you can find the links in the description. But they're right that taxation is involuntary. Part of a system imposed on us by an authority none of us ever consented to follow. The law, the police, the military, politicians, bureaucracy, lobbyists, taxation, central banking, none of, the, none of it is the result of voluntary, peaceful interactions. The state is somewhat autonomous, but in the end it mostly works for the capitalist class. So it helps to look at what it does as part of the bigger picture. When I, start reading, when I started reading anarchists and other anti-capitalist theory, I, I began to, I, I started to realize that the system was much bigger than just the state. I also realized by the logic of consent, the whole system is illegitimate. If you don't know where libertarians get their ideas from, you'd think it's strange they only choose the state as needing to go. Capitalism, social hierarchy, property norms, borders, racism, restrictive religious and cultural practices, rigid gender and sexual norms. No one chose to be born into any of those systems either. For example, long before you were born, some people bought up all the best land. As a result, we now have to pay to live somewhere. We can't just get materials together and build our own houses or move into a dwelling that's not being used. Everywhere is already owned. It doesn't matter if it's being used. As a result, we are forced to buy a finished house or to rent. Most of us don't have enough money to buy a whole house, but all of us need to live somewhere. But it turns out even the apartments, the little boxes in the sky with a bed and a shower, we, we still, they still cost us a third or even half of our paychecks. We didn't ask to be born into a system of rent where we have to pay just to live somewhere regardless of who actually built it or who does the repairs or how much anything costs. We just have to pay. That's not theft. They took the land already. They stole the land itself claimed it as theirs, and said anyone who wants to live on it must pay. They did nothing to earn your rent money. It's no different from if I paid a guy a fee and then stood in front of your door with a gun saying you have to pay the toll if you want to get in. Hey, I paid that guy, so I collect the toll. Money has changed hands, so it's legitimate now. Now, you could counter-argue that the reason everything is owned and the reason we have to pay rent is still the state. And there's no doubt the state charges and raises rents through its policies. But these policies aren't just implemented by the state, but written by rich people who will benefit from them. 
Among other monopolies, the state has a monopoly on land. In theory, anyone could pay to build their own place, but in practice, most people can't. They just can't afford it. The state leases land to rich people. Rich people finance building projects, and you have to pay them to be allowed to live there. And it's not a question of where, because you have to pay to live in any kind of human container. You're not allowed to live off the land either, or live outside the system, off the grid, because if they can, they'll drag you back in and force you to pay. Rent is basically a housing tax. The state's monopoly on land has destroyed the commons. It used to be legal to live off the land, grow one's own food, hunt, make one's own stuff. It wasn't the so-called tragedy of the commons that did that. It was capitalism. Capitalism is not simply free exchange. That is a very uncommon definition of the word. Capitalism is a top-down system whose forces turn resources into commodities, production into corporations, and homes into rental property. I don't really know why we talk about natural rights or freedoms in such a system, because surely if we had any rights at all, they would include the right to opt out of a system of violence and theft. The root of our problem is the ownership of property. Well, the root of our rent problem, at least. Proudhon made the case that property is theft, which is probably the original taxation is theft, by the way. You can read his book, What is Property?, if you want the full argument, but it's along the lines we've been talking about in this video so far. Again, I have to live somewhere. But if all the land is owned, and it was before I was even born, the owners will make me pay. I didn't ask them to put up apartment blocks. I didn't ask them to charge me money just to live there. I never consented to this system. The logic is the same as the argument that taxation is theft. There are costs imposed on you for being alive and having needs. The laws that dismantled the commons during the early stages of capitalism were geared towards making people depend on money and thereby forced to engage in wage labor, i.e. working for capitalists who already have money. Capitalism stole the commons from us and gave us the corporation and the absentee landlord. Over a couple of hundred years, as you can see if you've been paying attention, the large corporation has crowded out most smaller businesses and now controls retail, food, medicine, and nearly all aspects of life, gradually pushing out all the other competitors and making it almost inevitable you'll work for one in order to survive. Who made it necessary for you to make money? Who took all your other opportunities to make money? Why is it we're forced to work for people who have all the money just so we can have a little of it to survive? These are not natural forces. We used to simply have access to the things we needed. We used to be able to get water and grow food or forage. We used to be able to make our own homes and tools and clothes. In, but in today's world, that's pretty much not allowed. Instead, the state or the corporation has centralized production or dispensing of those things. For example, the state now controls water supplies, so where water was once free, it's now controlled. The commons has been privatized. Water used to be everyone's, and now it belongs to the state and big corporations like Nestle and Coke. That wouldn't be such a big deal if the state would always give us clean water to, to, all, to us or to anyone who needed it. But as we know from places like Flint, Michigan, that's not always the case. Do we have a right to water? Not anymore. The capitalist system depends on this privatization of the commons. So everything that was once simply part of nature's abundance is now locked away and only accessible if you have money. I'm not saying that, you know, contrary to all the, the, the right-wing bullshit that you hear about 
people like me. I'm not saying people who can work shouldn't work. I'm not saying I'm saying that they shouldn't be forced to work for someone else in order to be allowed to have something that they would have been able to get for themselves if not for the systems we're all born into. See the difference? Neither am I saying we should not have our own possessions. Again, a very common straw man that we all have to use the same toothbrush or something. Of course, it's people. It's, it's okay for people to have their own homes and gardens and phones. No communists are trying to take those things away. The problem is privately owning the means of production, the capital equipment used to make profit, because profit is theft too. Why is it considered legitimate for a few people to own all the corporations and all their resources, and the rest of us have to work for them? Did they work harder than we did? And that's why they have control? To some libertarians, anything is legitimate as long as money was used and ownership clearly established. But the amount of money you have says nothing about how much you deserve which should be obvious if you're opposed to the idea of theft, because it depends how you got that money. Corporate control is not better than government control. Denying someone access to something for political reasons is not worse than doing it because they don't have enough money. Most people get rich off some kind of profit. I don't want to go too deep into what profit is because that's the topic of my last video, so watch that. But basically, profit is taken from the value created by workers and given to people whose only contribution was money. If that arrangement were somehow essential to maintaining production, it might be worth it, but it isn't. It's another feature of capitalism designed to steal from you. It ensures the rich stay rich, and most workers never have enough money to make their way out of poverty and 60-hour week work, work weeks. So capitalism steals from us in order to reinforce the social hierarchy. Hierarchy and inequality are also integral features of capitalism, just like they were in feudalism. Capitalism and feudalism have similar structures, actually. Some people own the land and charge us for it, so we have to work for them. Some people have all the modern luxuries because others are forced to make them. Some people have uh, the ability to use any kind of violence and deception to maintain their power. And the rest of us just live under landlords. The ruling class have other ideas they can invoke to divide and rob the people, like racism. Racism isn't theft in itself. It just facilitates theft by making it legitimate to pay entire groups less money for their work. Yes, technically you could say racism is all just part of life and working for less just because of your skin color is still contractual. But the point is they're forced by circumstances to take that kind of work and, and that, that pay. Sure, it's minimum wage for 12 hours, but hey, you agreed to it. Yes, they agreed because they're forced to earn money somehow. Because even in this world of abundance, Billions of people are denied the means to survive. That's because any other avenues of survival besides working for someone else have been closed off. This isn't voluntary. They're not holding a gun to your head, true. They're just holding poverty to your head. I'm sure you can identify other forms of theft in life. I mean, even... Billboards and other advertising are the theft of public space. We could draw art on the walls, but it's all owned by the state, and the state leases it all out to advertisers, so only advertisers are allowed to write on public space. <laughs> okay. 
So if you're still saying taxation is theft, but capitalism is all right, hmm, you might want to do some more analysis of the systems we live under. It's not just taxation that's the problem. The entire system robs us at every turn. We should be sharing the huge abundance of nature and working together to share it all, not letting a few people control it. We've had our freedom and our time stolen from us. We should be taking it back. Thank you.